1 Kings 17. Again, with Elijah pops up, here he is. We're looking at the type of tribulation. We see a Gentile is helping a Jew who gets the benefit of a longer life. Where everybody who didn't help the Jews have no life. And he's in her house, he's biding there, and there's meal uh, uh, in a barrel forever, the oil forever. And it came to pass after these things, what we just read, <coughs> that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. Something respiratory. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee? Well, he's through him, he's taking care of your house during a drought. O oh, thou man of God, art thou come unto me uh, come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? What did Elijah have to do with that? Does Elijah have the power over sickness and health? She walks up to him. My son is sick. He's dead. It's your fault. Didn't I help you? Am I not taking care of you? He's dead. It's your fault. And you find that throughout the Bible. Things that only God can do, man gets blamed. And anybody who goes into a ministry... You've got to realize that they're going to come to you. They're going to do the same thing the Bible says. They're going to point you out, and it's not you. When Jesus showed up to Paul on the road to Damascus, he goes, Paul, why have you persecuted me? Paul never persecuted Jesus, but Christians. So Jesus Christ will, well, let me say, people will account to the man of God, the prophet, the preacher, the evangelist, whoever he is in the office of the church today, they will point to him and they will blame him. And yet God will point to the lost people who afflict and who give a hard time to Christians. And God will say, what would you do that to me for? But it's kind of remarkable, but kind of stretching. She blames her, Elijah for the death of her son. Not knowing God. And when Jesus Christ comes back, Matthew 25, when he judges the goats and the uh, the, the sheep he says you visited me in the, in the prison you took care of me when I was sick you fed me while I was hungry you gave me lodge when I was tired and they're like when did we do this they had no knowledge of who God is that's the same thing this Gentile woman see you gotta look at it Jesus told the story specifically in Luke chapter Luke 4 he wants you to see that this woman is Gentile and she pictures the judgment of nations upon what your conduct is to the Jews in the tribulation period. And he said unto her, Elijah, give me thy son. And he took him up, he took him out of her bosom, and she's nursing that child, and carried him up into a law. That's the first time that Lot shows up. We got a dead son. Lot shows up only two times in the Bible. Do we dare look at the other place it shows up? Acts 20 verse 9. Acts 20 verse 9. This is the only two places that this word Lot shows up. Acts 20, verse 9. And it says, And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen, fallen, the young boy fell asleep, fell in sickness, I mean, into deep sleep. Now that's going to come up in a moment too, that deep sleep. Because I'm going to say something I don't know. Nobody really knows. But notice the deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. 
So the only two places that this word love shows up is a reference of death. Paul went down, fell on him. Notice that word fell. Embracing him. This is what Elijah's going to do. This is interesting. We are almost getting a carbon copy of the story we're going to read tonight. Embrace him, said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, and had broken bread, and eaten, and talked a long while, so here's a resurrection of a man that died. We're going to see that in 1 Kings. Something about Acts 20 with the long preaching of Paul also is something with that of oh, first king 17 what i don't know but it's amazing how the same words show up many 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 years apart and he cried unto the lord and said oh lord my god oh lord my god you know that him he didn't say omg Oh my God is an expression of terror, of trouble, of tribulation, of problems. Hast thou also brought evil upon the woman with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? He passes the guilt from him unto God. God, what'd you do? There's death. And he stretched himself upon the child three times. And cried unto the Lord, said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. He's dead. There is no soul in that child. He is dead. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. And the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived resurrection. That would be the first recorded resurrection in the Bible. I'm going to show you somewhere else in Genesis 2. And it doesn't say, and it's supposed in Genesis 2, that Adam died. But it doesn't say death. And when we read the book of Acts tonight, we read that a man was in deep sleep, but he wasn't dead. So in uh, Genesis 2.21, with the account that we read in the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 9, I'm going to go with scripture with scripture and say, Adam did not die. But I can be wrong. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. Eutychus. He fell asleep during Paul's message. Fell out the window and died. And he took one of his ribs. Closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man. Made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Now some will say that like Jesus in the church. Adam died for his pride. If that's the case, then there's the first resurrection ever to be in the Bible. Now, like I said, I'm going to suppose, I'm not going to suppose, if he did not die, then you're seeing the first resurrection here in a tribulation type passage. Now, I have to ask you a simple question. Do you not see the resurrection in 1 Kings 17? Is it not there? It's there, right? All right. Let's go hit a religious group of people. Matthew 22, 23. And Jesus is going to do the same thing that I'm going to do. Matthew 22. I think I said 23. In Matthew 22, verse 23. We're going to look at a group of people called the Sadducees. Ready? Verse 23. Then same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection. They don't believe in the resurrection. And asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die, have no children, his brother shall 
marry his wife, and shall raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he married a wife, deceased and had no issue, let his wife, let his wife unto his brother. Likewise, the same also in the third and the seventh. At last, all the all the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, I thought you didn't believe in the resurrection. Imagine they ask a question that they don't believe and looking for an answer they don't believe in, but that's not our point tonight. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. These people do not believe the resurrection. Do they not know the scriptures? So let's go back to our, our context tonight of 1 Kings 17. Is there not a resurrection there? There are people who have studied the word, studied the Bible, studied the law, studied the prophets. And they have no idea what they're talking about. And that's what Jesus meant. Do you not err? There's going to be plenty other resurrections we're going to see. And the, they say, not counting Adam. In the new, I mean, the old and the New Testament, there are ten resurrected people. We're going to come across some more. In the Old Testament, that these guys, the Sadducees, were supposed to be experts of the law. And Jesus said, do you not err? Well, where would it be to err? And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, just like I'd be reading out of scrolls. And the soul of the child came in, came into him again, and it revived. It said that the soul had come out of him, verse 21. There is a death and resurrection. And when it comes to this, right now, what we're doing with tonight, how can you not miss that? And the probable cause, maybe Adam himself, maybe he was put to death. And was resurrected for the bride. Those Sadducees did not believe the Bible. And what was Jesus' comment? Do you not err? Did you not get it? Have you not read? Why are a bunch of junk Gentiles, a husband and a father with a wife and his daughter, sitting in a place called Daytona Beach, Florida, has nothing to do with the law, the prophets, or the Jerusalem, all that? Why is he sitting down teaching that there was a death and resurrection and you idiots come to me questioning about something you don't believe in, asking what you don't believe in? And then you got the answer. Do you not err the scriptures? And my friend, that's not sarcasm. That's the truth. Elijah is going to have a resurrection. The woman, uh, the great woman of Shinua or something like that, it's going to be resurrected. And offhand, the only ones I can think about is the ones in the New, in the New Testament. And you get, check that reference of, Ma of Matthew 22. Had the child that came from Nain that was in the coffin, I don't know if he'd been resurrected yet. Jesus Christ is going to be resurrected. Verse 22. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. And the soul of the child came into him again and re revived. Now that's kind of interesting. Because there, again, there's the death, there's the burial. Let's go to Revelation 11 6. We were there the other night. And I'll show you something. God's trying to show us something in the prophets for the Jewish people. Revelation 11, verse 6. These have power to shut up heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. I guarantee that's Elijah. And have power over waters to turn them into blood. I think that's Moses. Can't be 100% sure, but it sure looks like it. And to smite the earth with all the plagues as off as they will. Hey, Moses, what? Watch this. <laughs> Elijah, watch this. And he, as often as they will, don't get these two guys angry. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast, the Antichrist that ascended out of the bottomless pit, shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. They're dead. 
these two prophets, whom we say is Elijah and Moses. And their dead body shall he shall be shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. That's the holy city, Jerusalem, where our Lord was crucified. That's outside of Jerusalem. And they of the people and the kindreds and the tongues of the nations shall see their dead bodies. Their dead bodies. That child was dead. Three days and a half. That's three days and a half. Jesus was three days. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. That boy was not put in a grave. And they that dwell on the earth shall rejoice over them. And shall Merry Christmas and shall send gifts one to another. There's Christmas in the Bible. They are having Christmas over two saints of God who have been killed by the devil. Don't tell me put Christ in Christmas anymore. That's devilish. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Wouldn't you think that woman was being tormented that her son has died under the care of Elijah? After three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood up upon their feet. Would you not call that a resurrection? There's something about Acts 20 and there's something about what we're reading in 1 Kings. A death and a resurrection. And right after that, there's another rapture. There's something to what we're reading tonight. Though this child is a Gentile, he's dead. He's been resurrected. Elijah calls for a drought for three and a half years. I think it was three and a half years. Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. Elijah said, See, thy son lives. I, I, I don't. How would he say that? See? Oh, sorry. I mean, why are you blaming me, woman? Look, he's alive. Elijah, he was dead. See, he's alive. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is true. That's a sign. Is it not a sign? The resurrection. 1 Corinthians 11 1 says Jews require a sign. We got a trouble. We got problem. That woman's a Gentile. Why is she getting a sign of resurrection? Let me ask you one more question. Is I, I know there's no chapter markings in the Old Testament for the Jew, but let's just say, let's take it for granted. Is there a 1 Kings 17 in the Hebrew literature of the Bible? Let's go over to Mark 16. Why did she get a sign? It's simple. Mark 16, verse 17. Now, Jews require a sign. Do you know that the Bible says, the minor prophets, that it's going to be a famine of the Word of God? Do you realize when Jesus Christ comes back, no one knows who He is? There is no Bible in the tribulation period. So verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord has spoken these things, he was received up to heaven and sat on the right hand of of God. They went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. That woman got that sign because she don't have the complete scriptures. She trusted God as much as anybody in the time period of Mark 16. She just didn't have a complete Bible. So what would be her faith in God as far as her dead son? Here's a sign of resurrection. Oh, Elijah, it's got to be you. you got to be of God. Because nowhere ever recorded in history has, except for Adam, we don't know, has a resurrection happened. What did that blind man say that today? 
in John chapter 9. No one has ever heard of a blind man receiving their sight. That's a sign to the Jews to say, hey, this Jesus is no ordinary fellow. And when you read chapter 10 and conclude chapter 9, they still didn't get it. She got it. And she's not Jewish. Your son's alive. Here he is. Wow, you've got to be of God. This man can now see. Who made you see? Man, you did it on the Sabbath day. Who do you think you are, Jesus? Tell us who you are, Jesus. I told you. You won't believe. Now, you see when Jesus brought up the story of his Gentile woman, there was trouble. Luke chapter 4, and we'll finish. This is the problem with Luke chapter 4. And it's laid out. That woman said, Elijah, you got to be of God. Glory to God and I. Luke chapter 4. Verse 25. Read this last night again. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, with great famine throughout all the land. Now skip down to verse number 28. Oh, wait a minute, verse 26. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto a Sarkita, a city of Zidon, Gentile, a woman that was a widow. Now verse 28. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose, rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. What's the trouble? They know what First Kings 17 said. That woman in the end of the story believed God. What's the end of their story? Jesus, get out of here. How dare you bring up those Gentiles? How dare you give the example of the Gentiles? They knew perfectly well they're talking about the resurrection. They denied Jesus as God. They denied the story of that woman, that widow woman. And yet that widow, widow woman, that's hard to say, the Gentile widow woman, widow woman, widow woman, sorry, both funny, that widow woman believed God with signs. Here Jesus Christ is doing signs. He is God, and they don't believe who he is. That's how much the, the, the prejudice is to Gentiles. Just ask Jonah and, and Peter. How dare you bring up that story in the Bible? I mean, almost like that's, you would have to open up that scroll and blow the dust. <laughs> Get that dust out of here so we can read it. <laughs> But it wasn't for Elijah, it wouldn't even be there, as far as the Jewish people. 